Hey, Summit Park kids, roll the title sequence. We want to say welcome to Summit Park Kids. No matter where you are watching service from today, we are glad you were joining us. Here's the thing, Summit Park Kids isn't just for the weekend. It happens all week long. You can get involved by subscribing to the Summit Park Kids YouTube and interacting with all of us all week long. So one way you can get involved is by posting a video of you doing the big idea and the big word challenge. Don't forget to tag Summit Park Kids and use the hashtag Summit Park Kids every time you post. It's, it's big, big idea, idea time. time! Today's big idea is nothing is impossible for God. So everyone stand up and watch Drew for some motions. All right, our motions this week are nothing, nothing is impossible, impossible for God. God. Let's all do it together now, loud and proud. Are you ready? One, two, three. Nothing, Nothing is impossible, impossible for God. God. Good job, go ahead, take a seat, and remember to tag Summit Park Kids when you post those videos. Here at Summit Park Kids, we love God's Word. And the reason we do is because it helps us when we have a really sad day, a bad day, or a really, really rad day. The Bible is God's word, and God's word is good stuff. That means that we take the time to remember the things that the Bible says. We believe God's word is chock full of lessons about how we should live today. So one way that we remember God's word is through saying it out loud. That way we can keep it in our minds and in our hearts. So then that means we should practice the Big, Big Word Challenge. Challenge. Our Big Word Challenge comes from Acts 1.8, and it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Can you guys do this with us? Let's add some motions to it. Are you ready? Here we go. But, but you, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Great job, kids. Don't forget, we will give you another opportunity to say the Big Word Challenge every weekend at Summit Park Church for a chance to earn raffle tickets and candy. It's, it's offering time! Offering is another way to worship. It shows God that we love Him more than anything we could ever buy. Here's what's really cool. When we give, God takes our offering and multiplies it and makes it worth even more. Then he uses it to build his kingdom here on earth. So every time you give, you are helping God build his kingdom. At home, we want you to give your offering to any adult in the room. They can give it online at the church's website or on the Summit Park Church app. That's right. And our offering verse comes from Malachi 3.10 and says this, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. This verse is a command from God to give faithfully knowing that God will use it to build his kingdom. What you are giving is making an impact for God's kingdom. You are a kingdom builder. That's right, you are a kingdom builder. So stand up, stand up, stand up and say it with us, say, I am a kingdom builder. Yes, you are. You are a kingdom builder. Thank you so much for giving. Before we jump into the Bible lesson today, let's practice that big idea one more time. Remember, the big idea is nothing, nothing is impossible, impossible for God. God. Now stand up and do it with us, loud and proud. Are you ready? One, two, three. Nothing, nothing is impossible, impossible for God. God. All right, here it is, week four of our series, Wow. It's gonna be just as good, if not better, than last week, so check it out. Hey kids, my name is Zach, and if this is your first time here, welcome. 
Today is going to be awesome as we continue our series. Wow! In this series, we have been looking at some really awesome stuff that happened after Jesus went back into heaven. Our main focus is Jesus sending his followers, the Holy Spirit, and the amazing miracles the Holy Spirit did through those followers. Today, we're gonna be learning all about how nothing is impossible for God. Okay, so in order to, to help illustrate this, I have a friend, I think you might know him, Pastor Drew, come on out here. You're here. Hi. Okay, what's up? So, how you doing? I, I'm good. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing great because great. I'm doing great. So, I have a question for you. Yes. Would you say that it is impossible to take a finger off and then put it back on? Yeah. I'm trying. What about you guys? What about you kids? Do you think it's impossible to take a finger off and then put it back on? Let me show you something here. Watch this. Best magic trick ever. Prepare to have your mind blown. Here we go, here we go. Drum roll please, everybody. Here we go, watch, watch. Oh. He just took his finger uh. off. He just took his finger uh. off. Uh. He just took his finger off. Uh. Everybody scream. Uh. Ah. Thanks Drew. Everybody give it up for Drew. That was amazing and a little creepy. Okay, we've got some facts for Fiona. Let's check it out. Boys and girls, I'm so glad to be back sharing some spectacular facts with you. Anywho, my name is Fiona and this is Facts with Fiona. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can see every time I post a new video. This week I did my research while at GameStop so that I could learn all about video games. And I'm so excited to share these gaming facts with you. But first, we need to open our Bibles or get out our Big Word Challenge cards and recite the Big Word Challenge together. Remember, our Big Word Challenge comes from Acts 1-8. Are you ready? We'll say it on the count of three. One, two, three. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I love this verse so much. How amazing is it that God gave us the Holy Spirit to help us tell others about him. All right, boys and girls, let's get to it. I've got some voraciously vivid video game facts to share. Did you know that the Pokemon franchise has made more money than any other single franchise? That means more than Mickey Mouse. And did you know that Tetris was the first video game played in space? I don't even really care to play that on Earth, but it might be more fun in space. And did you know that Mario's last name is Mario? Mario, Mario, what if my name was Fiona, Fiona? And who would have thought that Mario's name was Mario, Mario? Anywho, if you know more facts about video games, make sure to put them in the comments or tell your small group leader so we can all be smarter. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Facts with Fiona. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more great facts. Have a spectacular week. Bye. Thanks, Fiona. All right, kids, like I said earlier in our Bible lesson today, we're talking about how nothing is impossible for God. Nothing, not a zip. And in the book of Acts in chapter nine, we see a story about a woman named Tabitha. Tabitha loved Jesus and worked to help people in need. And in Acts 9, 36 and 37, it says in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In the Greek, her name was Dorcas. And she was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in the upstairs room. Even though she loved Jesus and she was following him, Tabitha still got sick and died. This leads us to our very first point, which is bad things happen. Okay, find a neighbor and say that with me on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Bad things happen. We live in a world that isn't perfect. It's broken because bad things happen that weren't a part of God's original plan. Jesus even tells us bad things will happen and Jesus tells his disciples in the book of John that in this world, we will have trouble. Sometimes that trouble is smaller, like getting in a fight with your parents, your friends, or brothers and sisters. 
but sometimes it can be a lot bigger, like in this story in the Bible. So, so big that you don't even know how anything could make it better. That brings us to our second point, which is some things seem impossible. Find another neighbor and let's say that on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Some things seem impossible. After Tabitha died, Peter, one of the 12 disciples, found out about it, so he went to actually see her. When he got there, a bunch of people who knew her were standing around and they were crying. To them, it didn't seem like there was absolutely anything that could be done. It actually seemed impossible, but because we serve a big God, there isn't anything that's impossible for him, and that wasn't the end of the story. Hold on, I just got a notification that Quincy is back with some brand new questions. Let's go take a look. Hi, Summit Park kids. For those of you who don't know me, which you should by now, I'm here like every other week. My name is Quincy, and this is Questions with Quincy. So here's how it's, how it's gonna work. I'm going to ask you some questions about the Bible lesson today. The first two questions are worth five points, but the last question is worth 15 points. Whoever finishes with the greatest number of points is the winner, and they get nothing other than knowing that they won, which is kind of fun, I guess. Whatever, we're gonna get started. Today's questions will consist of things in the Bible that seem impossible, but they actually happen. Are you ready? All right, question one. What did God part to allow the Israelites to escape the Egyptians? Was it the Red Sea, Moses' hair, a cornfield, or a swimming pool? If you pick the Red Sea, that's right, and you've now earned five points. Good job. It's time for question Two, who did God take up to heaven in a fiery chariot? Was it Tony Stark, Elijah, Jesus, or Travis Kelsey? If you said Elijah, that's another five points because that is right. All right, final question, the big one. What did God do to stop the people of Babel when they tried to build a tower to heaven? Did he make them all fall asleep? Make them need to use the bathroom? Make them all speak different languages? Or did he do nothing? If you said make them speak different languages, that's correct and you got 15 points. All right, if you can, show me on both hands how many points you got. And if you got all 25 points, that is so amazing. Man, you guys are so, so smart. And I'm so glad that you joined me this week on Questions with Quincy. And remember, if you want more questions, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all next time. Bye. All right, kids, in this series, we're talking about the Holy Spirit and we're talking about miracles and the miracles that happened in Acts. Did you know this? God wants to do miracles in your life. And the best way that you can experience those miracles is by first making a decision to follow him. So if you've never prayed the prayer to make a decision to follow Jesus, I'd invite you to repeat these words after me. Everybody, let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes, and let's pray. Jesus, Thank you for sending me your Holy Spirit. And thank you for doing miracles in and through me. Today, I make a decision to follow you for the rest of my life. I pray that I could do your will. And I pray that miracles would be alive in my life. I love you, Lord. I praise you. 
In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen, amen. Hey, adults in the room, we'd love to hear about any decision that was just made. Uh, so make sure and reach out to us. But we're not completely done with our time together. So let's go ahead and kick it on back to our hosts. Thank you so much for joining us today. Make sure to post all your pictures and your videos with the hashtag Summit Park Kids. Summit Park Kids, we love you. Now go have the best week ever and don't forget to be a light. Bye. Bye.